to see what you see You are doing a great work in me I've decided I can't stand still No, you have given me purpose All my, all my heart is yours All my, all my life is yours I will, I will make a move for you to be done, I usually think about raking the leaves or taking out the trash. But there's another something that needs to be done that we easily forget about. I'm talking about taking the time to celebrate. For example, if I worked with astronauts for real real, I would be celebrating everything that happens. Like when someone designs a new spacecraft. Look guys, look at this new spacecraft I just designed. Whoa! <laughs> or anytime there's a countdown. Five, four, three, two, one! Five, four, three, two, one! Or anytime a crew member returns safely. They're home! In today's story, we're going to hear about Nehemiah and him and his people building the wall around Jerusalem. I'll bet it went a little something like this. Whoa, whoa, look at that. The wall is rebuilt. Hoorah! Well, maybe it didn't go like that. See you in a bit. The Bible. It's 66 books of history stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. 
Inspired by the book of Nehemiah, chapters 3, 4, 6, and 8. Nehemiah grinned as the new gates to the main entrance of the city of Jerusalem swung open for the first time. Less than two months before, Nehemiah had arrived in Jerusalem and taken a trip by night around the city's ruined walls. All the work that needed to be done seemed impossible, but with God's help, he managed to rally all the Jewish people in the city. Let's rebuild! Though the workers faced taunts from outside. <laughs> if a fox set foot on that wall, he'd fall down! <laughs> and trouble from within. We're starving! Our own relatives are charging high interest to loan us money for food. Nehemiah and the Jewish people stayed focused on the task at hand. Now, the Wall of Jerusalem had lay in ruins for over a hundred years, and the workers were a ragtag group of farmers and priests and goldsmiths. But in just 52 days, God had helped them rebuild the entire Wall of Jerusalem, including the towers and the gates. Their enemies were, um, let's just say, uh, less than pleased. Well, rats. <laughs> the Jews in Jerusalem were no longer open to attack. Once again, they could feel safe and grow strong. Nehemiah knew the reason for their success. God has helped us finish the work. Now that we have a safe place, we'll honor God by reading his law. A short time later, Nehemiah called all the people together. Men, women, and children gathered by the water gate at sunrise to hear the prophet Ezra read God's word. The Lord is the great God. Amen. 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 Everyone bowed down, faces to the ground, praising God for all he had done for them. Ezra read God's word until lunchtime, and the Levites taught the people what God's laws meant. We haven't followed God's rules. We haven't done a good job of loving God and loving others. I've been mean to my little sister. Mothers and fathers, boys and girls began to weep when they all realized just how far they had wandered from God. But Ezra encouraged them. This day is set apart to honor the Lord your God. So don't weep, don't be sad. Nehemiah called out over the crowd. Go and enjoy some good food and sweet drinks. Send some of it to people who don't have any. This day is holy to our Lord, so don't be sad. The joy of the Lord makes you strong. Yeah, party time! Tears turned to laughter when people realized it was time to celebrate one of God's feasts, Sukkot. Sukkot? What's that? The Feast of Booths. It's a way to remember how God took care of our people in the wilderness after he led them out of slavery in Egypt. Everyone lived in tents and booths. I want to make a booth. We need to go out and collect olive branches and build shelters to live in during the feast. All the people went into the hill country. They cut branches from olive, myrtle, palm trees, and brought them back into the city. There, they built shelters everywhere, on rooftops, before the gates, even in the courtyard of God's temple. We get to sleep outside? This is awesome! Everybody lived in those shelters for an entire week while they celebrated what God had done for them. Woohoo! The people were filled with joy as they were reconnected with the God who loved them so deeply. In fact, the Israelites had not celebrated the Feast of Booths like this in hundreds of years. Not since Joshua led our people into the Promised Land. Each day, Ezra read more of God's laws to them, and the people began to understand all that God had planned for them. When Nehemiah's people finished building the Great Wall, they celebrated with a big party. And how did they celebrate? By reading God's Word. Looking back at all the ways God has been there for them. We should celebrate God like that too. Not just on Christmas or Easter, but all the time. When God answers a prayer, we should celebrate. When God helps us make wise choices or helps us make it right with someone we've been fighting with, we should celebrate. And if you can't think about something right now to celebrate, look in the past and see what God has done for you. 
Look at stories in the Bible. Think about how God created the world and how he knows everything and can do anything. Think about how he sent his son to die on the cross for our sins. There are so, so, so many things we can celebrate. Here's the one thing to remember today. Look for ways to celebrate what God has done. And keep your eyes open for things God is doing in your life right now. And if you see something that needs celebrating, celebrate. Hoorah! Probably not like that though. More like this. Five, four, three, two, one.